Good morning and welcome to Hurricane Baptist Church in our morning Bible study here. We're doing a Bible study on fasting and we're just about through it. We got uh, today and, and tomorrow. I uh, can't let, uh, cover our last two. There was nine of them. We're using Dr. Town's book on uh, fasting and um, kind of breaking them down and talking about what it means and what the different fast way you're trying to accomplish your different fast. And, uh, you know, fasting is good, but remember the prayer goes with it. And the fasting is the part that we we deprive ourselves of something we give up. And uh, there's some kind of a sacrifice. But we're going to take the time that we would be eating and that to uh, dedicate to prayer. And so we're going to look at the John the Baptist here uh, this morning. And uh, so we see the John the Baptist fast. We know that John was a, was a different person. Uh, we're looking at uh, the character of a person as we look at uh, this fast and what it means to... Uh, our testimony, what people perceive us to be and what perceive us, they perceive us to be like. And we, you know, often I talk about that, that how important our testimony is that people see that we're different. And John was definitely different. Uh, we talked about him uh, eating locust and honey and, uh, you know, how he dressed and all those things. So he, he definitely looked different. He acted different. He was a, a Nazarite, so that meant he didn't uh, get near dead bodies. Uh, he... Um, Avoided uh, fruit of the vine, any kind of a liquor, any kind of hard, hard liquor drink. Uh, he let his hair grow, didn't get a haircut. Those are all part of the Nazarite vow. So there, when people saw someone in that appearance, especially that long hair, they recognized that that would be the a Nazarite. And so John maintained his testimony. We know that uh, Jesus talked about how great a, a person that John was, and his testimony is so true. And he stayed, he stayed consistent. With his testimony and uh, he avoided those things that would would uh, damage his testimony and that's kind of what we need to look like i uh, act like and, and look at um how we want to come across to people as we uh, as we're christian we're born again we're followers of jesus christ so therefore people have a certain expectation of us and they should have and we should be willing to live up to that expectation to be that image so the idea is we, as we look at this John the Baptist fast, and this isn't one of those that, uh, you know, 24 hours or something. Uh, part of this fast has to do with a, a life change. You know, like we, we give up something for life. Uh, alcohol, you know, I'm never going to, if you've drank in the past and you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian now, I'm not going to drink anymore, so I, then I, I don't partake of uh, alcohol anymore. That was one of the ones that I did. And so the idea is that we, and we maintain that. So once we decide that that's what we're going to do, then we need to be careful that we, we keep our promise, we, have, we keep our appearances to what they should be, avoiding the appearance of evil. Uh, we realize that sometimes people are going to challenge us on things and, and the way we look and the way we act. Uh, a lot of people don't feel comfortable around Christians. They, uh, if you don't partake of the things that they do, you know, if a, if a man uh, doesn't uh, share in the dirty jokes or if he, he don't want to uh, be around the, the drinking and those kind of things or don't party in that like a lot of people do, uh, and then they, you're kind of pushed away because you're, you're different. And we, we, we don't want to be different just to be different, but when, we, when we're different, we're different because of who we are and what we represent and who we represent. So, therefore, sometimes we're called to, to suffer, suffer a little persecution, but uh, we're to count all joy when we're persecuted like that. So we're looking at this John the Baptist fast, and uh, we're going to get the idea that, what am I going to do? Uh, what, how long is this fast? Am I doing a, maybe a short-term fast as part of it, and then followed with, uh, as part of that, then a long-term fast? Uh, maybe I'm not going to do a 24-hour fast to start with, and then I carry on with another part of that as a life change. So... And that's what we want to see here. Uh, we want to increase our testimony. How can I increase my testimony? Uh, how we appear, how we dress, how we look. Uh, we want to we want to fit in with the times. We don't want to be completely oblivious, uh, oblivious to what's going on around us as far as dress. Uh, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves, but we want to be a uh, what I want to say uh, maybe a common looking person, just one that fits in, but not to the extremes of the world. Uh, you know, there's a time when fads go through with the real short skirts, and then there's the idea that people didn't wear the stuff down to their ankles. Now, we, we want to avoid all those things. We want to just fit in and, and be sure that we have that testimony that people recognize uh, Christ in us. And when we get into the fast, we've got to keep some things in mind. You know, is why, why am I doing it? Okay, what is it? Uh, is it something that I'm, I'm, I'm being threatened by somebody? I'm going to fast now to protect myself. Uh, one of the illustrations that... Uh, uh, Dr. Towns used in his book was a, a lady that was spreading rumors about a, a church and she was going to sue the church and so the church, they were innocent of any wrongdoing so they went into fasting and prayer. 
uh, to try to uh, get the situation cleared up so the truth would come forth. So uh, sometimes we, we feel like we need protection, but we're being threatened by something or um, we want acceptance. We feel like we're being uh, pushed out, so we want to be accepted, so we're praying fast that, that we fit in, but we want to do it in the right way. Um, uh, is it healthy for me? Is this, is this fast that I've chosen, is it healthy for me? And, and remember, we've reminded you a few times that uh, anytime you're in like a 24-hour, 36-hour fast or whatever length of fast you're doing, if you feel sick and feel like you really need food, your body is calling for food, not just the, the hunger pangs, but just the real need of food, then to, to break the fast and go ahead and get something to eat uh, so that you don't suffer. There's Again, there's not any awards for endurance uh, during that time, and the idea is that we're doing it as a sacrifice. Uh, the idea is... Uh, what if, what, uh, how does it affect those that know what I'm doing? Say I'm abstaining from alcohol, how does that affect how people perceive me? And again, we have to be willing then to, to put up with some, uh, maybe some shunning, uh, maybe some ridicule. Uh, I, I hear, I remember through the years I was saved late in life. I was 47 years old when I got saved, 45 years old when I got saved. And uh, the idea was that uh, Sometimes that people they kind of push you aside and make fun of you. You know what's the matter with you? You you, you don't you're better than we are. You you know so we have to be willing to go through some things and and be sure that uh, we're willing. To, if if uh, the heat comes, we have to be willing to stick by our values, stick by what we're doing. After all, this is something we're committed to do. And and then we have to keep be sure that that we have a, a spiritual purpose in mind. Now I want I have a testimony. I want to keep. It's not a, a legalistic thing. And uh, it's easy sometimes as uh, Christians we can get it into the legalistic aspect of things that, that we're just uh, we're doing it uh, just to look good to those around us. We want people to look at us, and and again we want to have the right testimony, the right appearance. But it, it's that's not the purpose. The purpose is that I want to honor God. I want the Lord to be lifted up and Jesus to be exalted and people to be drawn to Him because I I do live different than the world. I have some standards, I have some values that a lot of people in the world don't live up to. And so as a Christian, I have that responsibility. Uh, and then, why am I picking this certain food or this certain liquid to stay away from? Well, I, I sure have a, a uh, in my own life, in my own uh, heart, I have that objection to alcohol. As a Christian, we should partake of no alcohol. And, and I know there's people that say, well, you know, that's... It's okay to have a drink now and then, have a glass of wine with your meal and all those kind of things. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't get into that, but what for myself, okay, for the way I look at it, that's one of the things that, that I give up. I pushed away. It wasn't really a sacrifice, per se. It's something that I, for my testimony and my witness, considering where I was and where I wanted to be and, and those around me. So, uh, the food, if, are you giving up the food? I say you want to lose weight and you know, is it because you want to look better, to feel better so you can be more used by God? You want to show that you have some control over your appetite and that or is it just because you want people to, to look at you and, and to, uh, to uh, maybe lust after you if a woman and that or whatever. So we have to keep these in mind. So I you remember we talked about at the end of the, the chapter on uh, fasting on each one of these, uh, Dr. Towns puts a little uh, form in there to, uh, for you to go through and it says here the aim of this is then to expand my and increase my testimony to Jesus Christ through the John the Baptist fast for testimony influence so I want people to see a difference in my life and if I'm if I've been having a problem you know maybe I haven't been living quite like I should I need to let them see the change in my life so I am in a case like that you might want to do a short fast and then extend it on out all right, so then I, I will be free of alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, and my influence that destroys my testimony because I want Christ to be magnified in my body. I want Jesus to be lifted up in my body. I want people to see Christ in me. Remember that uh, he tells us all in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 19, he says, uh, well, No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he lives within us and he indwells us. So we want to keep that in mind. And also, uh, Paul over in his letter to 1 Corinthians in chapter 9, verse 27. I just want to read this to you. He says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, thus that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be cast away. Paul said, I want my life to be true and I want to be consistent. I don't want to uh, fall away, backslide, and not do what I should be. So God doesn't push me to the side and kind of set me on the wall. Then lose his salvation. He's not worried about that but not being used by God. So this is the John the Baptist fast, and we just, again, we need to determine what we're going to do. But he has the verse here he covers, he said in Matthew 5, 16, he said, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, 
and here's the key, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this time we could come together and as we look at this John the Baptist fast, we just understand, Lord, the need to have a testimony that rings true that people might see Christ in us and have a desire to know the Savior, the one who's done so much, died on that cross, shed his blood for the sins of man. And we thank you, Father, for the time that we turn and put our faith and trust in that shed blood. So be with each one of us now. Help us to live the kind of life that blesses you and blesses others. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.